the more exciting material to talk to you about America in biblical prophecy. Dr. Mawiri, Robert Mawiri, pastor, mentor, last day's prophet, open us in word of prayer, please, sir. Thank you for watching. I pray a special blessing upon you. May the hand of God rest upon you mm. and the joy of the Lord just to fill your heart because this indeed is the day the Lord has made. Thank you, Father. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Ah, a good little topic here today. I think it's an awesome topic. The people are wanting to know about it because many... Biblical scholars and some of the pastors are saying, you don't need to be concerned if we're here in America. We're not even in the Bible. It's not even mentioned in the Bible. Further, many of them say that in the last days, nobody needs to be concerned about America in the last days. What do you say about this and what does it as written say? Well, you know, America is in the Bible. And America has a very, very special role to play in the end of days, in the last days. And um, most of these pastors have not gone back to it is written mm -hmm. to find out for themselves because it's there in Scripture and we're sure. going to go through that um, because most people want to know what's the role of America in the end of days. What's their contribution? Now, what's going to happen? More Americans are asking, are we part of the end mm -hmm. time or most of these preachers and books say that the America will not, is not mentioned in the scripture, so America will not be here. Either it will be destroyed, it won't play any part, because they can't see it in scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe God had us take this subject to share with the people that indeed America is in the Bible. And we're going to find out now, from it is written. I was going to say it's interesting because I know you're going to get to this, but the word America may not be in the Bible, but you talk about, especially in these last days, God gives everything to divine revolution, uh, revelation, through illumination. You say it's caught and not taught. So you're going to show us, because you say that America as a nation is in the Bible. That's right. I think we better go right into it is written, because we have no authority except it is written. Amen and amen. Let's go to Isaiah, chapter 24, verse 14. Isaiah 24, 14. They raise their voices. They shout for joy. From the west, they acclaim the Lord's majesty. Now, that is America, from the West, from okay. America. There will be praises. Look at what's going on in the world. America, that's all the music, all the worship, the preachers, the missionaries. It's all coming out of America because America was chosen by God. And here a prophecy is given in Isaiah that mm. from the West. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. you say, wait a minute. The West means Western civilization. The West is not just America. How do you get America from the West? 2,700 years, Isaiah is writing mm -hmm. about America. Mm -hmm. How do we know he was writing about America? Because the, the term Western civilization was coined in 1905. Now, Isaiah is speaking 2,700 years. <laughs> Not 1905. Okay. So he is pointing to a place, the furthest continent from Europe, mm. before the international deadline. And he called it the West. So we are very specific in, the, in Scripture. God mentions us. We are the West where the worship will go forth from this from country the, to the Lord. Amen. The more churches are in America, mm. there's more preaching here, more worship here. You know, it's exactly the fulfillment of Isaiah. Of Isaiah. Mm. That out of this country, worship will go forth to the Lord our God. Mm. And imagine, just think for a moment. In 1492 BC, Moses leads the children of Israel out of bondage, cross the, the Red Sea 
to the wilderness, to Jordan, to the land. Mm -hmm. Now, 1492 exactly, A.D., Columbus is led by God to bring the people of God out of what? The Inquisition in Europe to cross over to a place in the land where they would worship the Lord. I'm talking about precision, precisely 1492 A.D., 1492 B.C. You're saying that's not a coincidence. You, you can't get this. You know, <laughs> you, you, I, I, only, God, only God. Only God could do this. That means America's identity and destiny is tied in with Israel, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. And we'll go into more details concerning how precise God ordained that America would be what it is today, that America did not create its greatness by itself. Mm. Greatness is from God. God is the one that led Christopher Columbus. As he says in his own words, that I said, I felt the hand of God on me. He led me. Wow. It was God. He says, he told me. Most of you do not know Columbus. All you know is the secular writers who omit all the important things about Columbus. Mm -hmm. He was a man of God. He was a Messianic Jew. Ah, you've taught that before. And that, he I, I learned it from you. Was led by God. And he says, God led me. He, he, he followed the, dictation, the dictations of the Holy Spirit. God dictated to him what to do, and God led him, and he acknowledges that. Mm. That's why America's origin, the founding of the New World, was at the appointed time by God himself. It was an act of God, and it was for the purpose of, he, he actually explains the purpose. He says it was for the purpose of preaching the gospel mm. to the nations. Mm -hmm. Because out of America, the gospel would go to the nations. Amen and amen. That's why it is important for us to find exactly as, as you read about the West being the place where the worship will go forth, the ministry to the nations will go forth. We are the light to the nations of the, of the world. To us is given that glorious responsibility. If we are faithful to that calling, God will be faithful and he has blessed this nation greatly because of it, because it's a biblical nation appointed by God at the appointed time. It's so beautiful because it's all prophetic and it's a prophetic fulfillment. That's why it is important to find out how it actually happened. Okay. Especially when it comes to the trip that the voyage of Columbus. I think I, I need to lay this foundation before we read scripture. Columbus left on the day of Batishma, the day of mourning, the ninth of Ov, the day in which the first temple was destroyed, the second temple, the day in which actually in modern times the, the first world war, the second world war, and several other things happened on that day. It's a day of mourning. Mm -hmm. So on that day of mourning, Columbus being Jewish, they were being kicked out of the country of Spain and He's looking for a place for persecuted church, for persecuted Jews, and God leads him to the new world. He lives on the day of mourning, the, the day that the first temple and the second temple was destroyed. On that day, he sails. And on the day he found, discovered the new world was the day of Simca Torah the day of receiving the Torah, the seventh feast of the Lord, on the seventh day when they, they celebrate receiving the word of God. That means America is raised up to receive the word of God, to celebrate the, 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 the liberation, the, the freedom, and to thank God for what he has done. Simca Torah is God, we thank you for your word. It's going to guide us. It's going to lead us. We're going to be the people of the book. We're going to believe the book. And think of it. Columbus being a Jew, mm. he was going to open yeah. a country for the persecuted believers, the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. So all the believers left Europe because of the Inquisition. And they come to, to the New World. And for the Jews... They start flowing, well, uh, coming down 
and flocking to the island in the Caribbean called today Jamaica, uh -huh. which means Jew Mecca. It became a Mecca for the persecuted Jews in the Inquisition. That's how amazing mm. what God did to really establish America's destiny, what God wants with this nation, what our role is in, in, in the end of days, mm -hmm. in bringing the gospel to the nations. Because Columbus had a, a vision from the Lord, and he wrote a book of prophecy. Yep. And in the book of prophecy, he said, the gospel will go to the nations of the world from this country, mm -hmm. from the new world. The gospel will be preached to the nations of the world. Guess what happened? America is on the lead in reaching the world for Jesus Christ. And this is so amazing how God has done this because he is faithful. You, why the day of the Torah, the Simcha Torah? is because the Torah is the key to America, to the nations, to your life, to every individual on the face of the earth. It's day of receiving the Torah because Torah will define our lives, transform our lives. That's why I like us to read what the Torah is, mm -hmm. the power of the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 3. And, and by the way, for anybody that might not be understanding, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible which is the mainstream for Judaism, the basis for that, and it includes Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy 27, 3. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law. And when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that flows with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee. That's it. The security of Israel First of all, Israel, because we are modeled after Israel. Mm -hmm. We embrace the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. The Holy One of Israel is the one that we worship in this new world, in America. Because when we embrace the word and celebrate the word, then we are transformed and we are blessed when we depart from the word like Israel of, of old. <laughs> they turned away from God and the judgment of God came upon mm -hmm. them. We are in a critical moment in this nation because we're turning away from God. Come on. When we look at Israel, they were blessed, they were a superpower, and God protected them. God just kept blessing them. Then they took their eyes off God. They rebelled, they backslid, they went astray. And the, the judgment came, and Israel was literally destroyed. This is a warning to us here, mm -hmm. that we, as we embrace the Holy One of Israel and His Word, just like Israel on, as a matter of fact, we followed the pattern of Israel mm -hmm. from, the, from the, the, the Inquisition, 1492, from slavery, uh, 1492 BC, it's all they patterned after mm -hmm, Israel. Mm -hmm. This whole the history of America is patterned after Israel. But here is the here is the key. The key is: Can we depend upon a Torah that was written hundreds, thousands of years ago? Can that be relevant today in the modern world, with all the the high tech and all this stuff that's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the space age. Can we go back to the primitive times when the Bible was the Torah, the Bible, the, when I say Torah, for the people that are kind of Jewish understand what Torah is, is uh, as Andy said, is the first five books of Moses, but the Torah is also the, the Tanakh, which is all the prophets, and then the, 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 the wisdom books, it's the Old Testament. So here we see God blessing his people for believing the word and God judging them for turning away from his word, just like America. And the word of God, is it relevant today? Can we actually experience the same judgment as Egypt of old? 
can that relate to us? That's why we need to go to scripture to find out whether the scripture is valid today, whether the covenant that he made with America, because we'll come to the covenant that actually mm. reflects that of Israel. But let's find out from Deuteronomy 27, verse 3, and let's go to Isaiah 55, 11, and Romans 10, 17. All right. You, you got a bunch of scriptures there. All right. Deuteronomy 27, 3, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that flows with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Now Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And finally, New Testament, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, talking about the Israel of old in America, mm -hmm. Moses tells Joshua, when you cross over, you are to build me an altar, to build an altar to the Lord, and write the Ten Commandments. That is dedicating the land to God. Future generations to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the first thing you do is build an altar and write on that altar the Ten Commandments. Because the Ten Commandments will bring the blessings and will bring the curses when you disobey the Ten Commandments. So put it on Mount Ebal. So they put it there, and I've been to Mount Ebal. As a matter of fact, we found the word fit for life. Still there, and uh, we took it to the, um, to the city hall in Ariel. It's, it's a historical fact that they built the altar, they wrote the Ten Commandments to dedicate the land to God. To say this land belongs to God. This land will be ruled by the will of God, by the Ten Commandments. By the will of God, we are going to be a people under God. Now, isn't it amazing that you know on our on our dollar in God we trust, mm -hmm. just like Israel, in God we trust the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We trust in Him, just like Israel of all trusted in God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, we find that they wrote the 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 the, um, the Ten Commandments on that altar. Did Americans do that when they came to this new world? Mm. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's go and find out whether there's a, a clear parallel, parallelism right mm. here. There is a paradigm. It is, it, it, is, it is amazing that the same pattern of the founding of Israel and the founding of America, now we come to the, to the covenant that the, the, the Mayflower, Pilgrims, fathers, when they came to this country, when they arrived, they made a compact and said, we're going to be a people under the Holy One of mm -hmm. Israel. We dedicate this land to the Holy One of Israel. We shall be a separate people dedicated to the Lord to serve Him and to follow Him. And we are asking for God's blessing, God's protection, God's provision, and we're asking God to lift us up just like he did with the children of Israel. Exactly, Israel put the Ten Commandments on the altar on Mount Ebal. You know, the Mayflower pilgrims signed a compact, dedicating right there in Virginia, dedicating what? America to the Lord. So that America was set apart, a very unique mm -hmm. parallel to Israel. That's why when we follow God and we obey Him, we are lifted up into a soul superpower. When we disobey God like Israel, the hand of God is lifted from us. The blessings of God are removed from us. The judgment of God comes just like Israel was blessed when they followed God. They were judged when they didn't follow God. It's happening. The same thing. The happening same over pattern and over again. because we committed this nation to the Holy One of mm -hmm. Israel and say, God, you 
blessed Israel. We want the blessings of Israel. Even when you go to the Congress, you see the, the, the Moses. It's actually the, the only you know, thing that controls and rules uh, and establishes all the laws in, in this nation are based upon the Ten Commandments. Not Ten Suggestions, <laughs> but Ten Commandments. These are absolutes. And not the new Ten Commandments of the world nowadays. Well, those are the ones that are leading mm. this nation astray, mm. leading the world astray, bringing the judgment of bringing God, the judgment of God. removing right. the blessings of God, yes, sir. so that the nation is caused, because this is right here, his word is not going to change because of time. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. His word is eternal, and his word is valid right now as we are speaking. Because it's the same yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever. Hallelujah. Because it's the same. He wants us to either call this nation to repentance and turn back to the biblical absolutes to live according to the dictates of God, according to what God hmm. said. If we're to be a blessed people, lifted up, made a soul superpower, it's that's the blessings of God. Amen. If we turn away from that, then the judgment of God, just like Israel, she was wiped out, scattered among the nations. The foreign enemy, that is always a sign. Mm -hmm. When the hand of God is lifted from you, you, you look for an foreign, enemy to come in. Foreign enemies come from outside mm -hmm. to destroy you. Sure. Just like what's about to happen to America if we don't repent. This is a very serious moment in the history of our nation. We are at a critical point. We're at the crossroads right now. Mm. We're either going to go all the way with God or go all the way with the new Ten Commandments or go with God's Ten Commandments. We have to choose who we're going to save. Mm. You, every family, every person, every state in this nation has to make that decision. Either God's going to be our God, the Holy One of Israel, or we're going to make our own gods, mm -hmm. just like Israel. They, they backslid, and we can see from Israel's history what happened We've when you do that. We've got the word to show us. Exactly. That's why we are going through a, a, a terrible time with our, we, with our country in terms of the economy, uh, the, the de demise of the American dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about to be completely the death of the American dollar, the American global economic superpower is now being broken because we are turning away from God who brings the blessings, who protects us, who is on and off. Just like the, the pilgrims, they made a covenant with God. We are breaking covenant with God. We are moving away from the covenant with the Holy One of Israel. And that's why it's such a critical thing that we need to really repent. I'm talking about calling for a holy convocation, mm. another compact with our God, a, a message to all the states, to all the people all across this nation to call them to repentance, to returning to biblical Christianity. I'm talking about returning to it is written that we may again be a blessed people, that we may again be a powerful people, because when God is with you, who can be against you? What power can come against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? Because God, whom you worship, will protect you. He will be your provider, El Shaddai, and make this nation greater than ever before, because our God, is a God of love. Amen. He loves this nation. He loves every individual. And he wants the best for everyone. That's why it is important to look at what is the future for this nation. Mm. Where are we? Where are we going? What should we expect in this nation? If we disobey God, God's going to judge us. Mm -hmm. That we see in Israel. Because we followed Israel's history every step. Just like Israel was powerful great nation, you read the Bible, you, you find how God protected them, delivered them from these great powers and nations, and how God was 
there when they needed help. He was their helper in time of need. So now they turned away from God and the judgment came and they couldn't defeat their enemies. The shield was removed. Where are we? What are we going to do? Is there hope? That's why I want us to go to the book of Joel. Mm. Because we are living in the last days. Amen. We are in, in a critical moment. Is there hope for America? Is there hope for the church? Not only in this country, but around the world. Mm. As we see God's hand upon this nation, it's not limited to this nation. Because God is not a respecter of persons. It's a choice. Destiny is not by chance. It's by choice. Any nation can choose to go with God. Any person can choose to go with God. Any family can choose to go with God. Because God is not limited to nations. He's a personal God mm -hmm. who loves you, who cares for you, who has a plan for you. It, it doesn't matter whether the whole nation turns against God. If you walk with God, he will walk with you. If you walk with him, he will protect you and provide for you. That's why from a national to a personal, because God is very personal. Let me, let, let me stop you right there and, and get you to say that again, because we have a lot of comments come in when you talk about if America would repent and turn from their wicked ways, the Lord would bring the blessings back to them again. There are a lot of people that say, well, America's not going to do that, but what about me and my family? What about us? And you just said something very, 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 very prophetic, that it doesn't matter if the nation turns, that if you individually if you and your spouse, if you and your family, if you turn and make God your God and repent of your sins, is that part of, part of what the remnant is? That is the remnant. The remnant is a people. You hear us speaking about the remnant. It's a people that are not going to go with the majority. It's mm. a minority that chooses to go with God. Amen. They always have been a remnant, even in Israel. It's there's always, always a remnant. <laughs> God has his people. They, they know that they need God, and they're desperate for God, and they, they seek God, and God is found by them because he knows them. It's, that's why I said it's a choice. Mm -hmm. As an individual living in a rebellious time, in a rebellious generation, in a time when people are turning away from God, in this nation, we threw out God from the public square. There's no more Ten Commandments. Mm -mm. There's no more prayer. So we, we, we threw him out, but he, he's not thrown out. He is standing at the door of every individual, there you go. knocking, asking if he could come in and sup with them. He's a personal God. He wants you to know that, yes, the nation might be turning away, but... He won't turn away from you if mm. you don't turn away from him. He will protect you. He will cover you with his precious blood. He will wash you clean. And he will fill you with his Holy Spirit. And he will guide you. And you will be blessed in spite of what's going on in the nation. That's why it's extremely important for us to read I was going to say, chapter. here it is. This is, this is where it just, tells yeah. it right here yeah. what he's saying. Joel 2.28 says this. And it shall come to pass afterward that I, that's God, will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men dream dreams. Your young men sing visions. Everybody's going to have the spirit poured out, but the remnant will choose who to follow. You, it's, you choose to receive what God's giving. Mm. God's not a respect of persons. He's calling on every person person to turn away from the evil ways and turn to him mm -hmm. and ask for the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ and the infilling of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. so that the Holy Spirit will give you the power to go from victory to victory to victory to victory because mm -hmm. there is a future in these last days. That's there right. is a victorious people on the earth in America and around the world. There will be people that will stand up to the Antichrist, the false prophet, who will be that glorious remnant that mm. remains faithful to God, you're part of that remnant. Choose to be part 
or people that walk with God. Because as they walked with God in the past, you can walk with God today. Enoch walked with God. All through the scriptures, mm -hmm. we find Noah walking with God. We find Abraham. We, we find so many. The apostles all walking with God. You can also walk with God. But here is, here is something that I think we should look at as we talk about specifically about America in prophecy, our place in prophecy. Now we found 1492, Columbus, 1492, mm -hmm. Moses. Mm -hmm. We found that America made a... Abraham made a, a covenant with God, and then that covenant was confirmed and reestablished through Joshua when he ended, ended the land uh -huh. uh, with the Ten Commandments to start the nation. That was the constitution that was the establishing of a nation under God. We see that with, with the pilgrims who came to America doing the same thing, but is there another definitive confirmation that America was not man's idea that it was a God idea, uh -huh. a divine idea, that America does not belong to anyone. It belongs to God. It was his plan to, stick, to give a people of God persecuted in Europe, to give them a place where they could worship freely, a place where they could be blessed without interference from the government, where there is a free people that will follow God freely. This is why we need to look at, before we go further, I think we need to talk about the, uh, the, the you know, the independence, mm -hmm. uh, the, the 4th of July. Amen. How 1776. 1776. How that was also part of a prophetic fulfillment because that happened in the year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, property is returned mm -hmm. to its rightful owner. So God, in 1776, he actually is the one that orchestrated the independence of America. It was part of his plan in the year of Jubilee. First of all, we see the, the founding of the new of the New World Order. Oh, not New World Order. <laughs> the New World. <laughs> not New World Order. That's coming though. <laughs> That's coming. Now forgive me. Slip of the tongue. <laughs> Slip of the tongue. We're talking about the New World. We see how it happened exactly 1492. And we see the the covenant being established with ancient Israel, mm -hmm. with America, and we come to an important moment in the history of America, breaking away from Great Britain, becoming independent in the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. You can't miss this. Let's read from there the... It's a clarity here that is a... It's like the, 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 the roadmap was mm -hmm. laid out in Scripture, and... It, and Israel and America seem to be carried on that pathway. Mm -hmm. where, They're on the same path. Where God's leading. And now we, we come to the year of Jubilee. Let's read that so that people will know what the year of Jubilee is because 1776 was the year of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. According to the Jubilees, the Jewish calendar mm -hmm. of the Jubilees, mm -hmm. it was the year of Jubilee. And God declared freedom to the American people. All Let's right. read that from, from Leviticus. Leviticus 25, 9 through 13. Then shall thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall follow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. You shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. You shall eat of the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee, you shall return every man unto his possession. Fiftieth year, jubilee year. Now, imagine how precise this is. <laughs> America, New World is founded on the Feast of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the independence of America happens at what? At the Feast of the Lord, mm -hmm. the year of jubilee. Yes. 
everything is following the biblical Jewish narrative because we are the extension of the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, mm, and Jacob hallelujah. as we obey him, as we follow him, as we surrender our lives to him and to his will. That is why it is extremely important to see something even more amazing, which we are about to read, concerning the separation of America from Great Britain. It was in scripture, it was prophesied, everything happening in this nation is prophetic. That's why we are bound to see the greatest prophetic fulfillment of the end of America. What will happen? Why it's going to happen? It's because it, when we deviate from what God has ordained, hmm. his plan and his purpose, then there is destruction. That's why destruction is going to come to our nation for disobeying God as a chosen nation, a separated nation, a nation that started with, imagine the beginning of America. Columbus, Jewish Messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. How do we know he was, he was Jewish? Because he left his legacy mm -hmm. to the gatekeeper of Jerusalem. And actually, Columbus was so Jewish that he actually established a trust for blessing the Jewish people, returning the Jewish people to the land. He actually started a fund for the Jewish people <laughs> to return to Israel. I've heard this before. So, you so talk about this it. This is in his book. Amen. So he was a man who called by God and he brought the Christians and the Jews to the new world. Amen. So amen. this is the partnership of the one new man, Jew and Gentile. Yes, that's why they came together. to New York and that's why they're here in America being blessed and the church being blessed because the Holy One of Israel is the Holy One of the church is the same God. Amen. That's why as we look at this, you can't help but say to God, be the glory. Great okay. things he's doing. Hang That's on. why we Hang need on. to. Before you get there, I'm going to set you up. I know what's coming next, all right? But I want to summarize for you for some of the naysayers. Yes. yes. For some of the naysayers. Yes. You have now shown us that the it is written says that the West, and you've shown us how that meant the Americas. You've shown us how you can still say it's a coincidence if you want, but by the way, the word coincidence is not in the Bible. It's not there. You showed us 1492 for Moses founding it and 1492 for Columbus founding it. I want you now to go to the book of Daniel and show any naysayers that might be out there how clear scripture is that America is in the Bible. <laughs> You're excited, I know, because I've heard you teach this so I'm many times. It's so you, clear. It's my people perish for lack of knowledge. knowledge. Receive biblical knowledge, revelational knowledge, yes. knowledge that's based upon amazing act of God in mm. history, works of God, fulfillments of the plan and purpose of God in real history. Concrete types and shadows. Exactly. You say. So now we come to where America was actually mentioned mm -hmm. in Daniel. Mm -hmm. You know who gave Daniel the prophecy? The archangel came down, <laughs> and the archangel spoke about America. Amen and amen. Because America has a role to play until the end of time. Mm -hmm. America is not by coincidence. It is a ordained of God. Everything that's going on is ordained of God. As long as we choose him, he Come won't on. force us to obey him. Amen. It's an invitation to say yes. When you say yes, he blesses you. Now let's go to okay. Daniel to find out that the independence of America was ordained of God, given to Daniel by Gabriel. By the way, 20, from heaven. 2,600 years, right? That's Daniel right. 600 BC around yeah, that area. Right over there. Okay, here we go. Daniel 7.4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> right here, the lion is Great Britain. It, right. If you go to Great Britain, 
You've, you've been to lions London. everywhere. Yeah, oh, the lions national everywhere. National symbol. So it's a national symbol. So here we have um, America separating mm. as an eagle. What's the symbol of America? The eagle. Amen. When, how did it separate from, from, from the lion? At the appointed time in the year of Jubilee. 1776. Year of Jubilee. So here we find <laughs> precision. God orchestrated all these things. The separation of America was ordained mm. by God. Prophesied 2600 years ago. We are living in a land set apart by God. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the good thing about being separated unto God is the blessings come and the curse comes. Amen. If you obey God, you're blessed. If mm -hmm. you disobey God, mm -hmm. you judge. That's why no man will make America great again. Only God will make amen, America amen. great again when we repent of our sins and turn back to our God. Only then will God again lift up his people. Because this is a nation that was fashioned after Israel by the Holy One of Israel. The, why? Because the people of God were being persecuted just like Israel was being persecuted in slavery in Egypt. All the believers, the saints, were being persecuted for believing the Bible, mm -hmm. for wanting to follow God. So they, God said, okay, I'm going to get you out of this persecution, out of the Europe. I'm going to take you to the new world where you can worship freely. That is the amazing thing how God from the beginning, going back to the day of mourning, to the day of rejoicing, to the, to the year of Jubilee, freeing America. To be a people unto God that serves the Lord, that fears God. This is why I think when as we look at this, we need to realize something. That the God we worship is the same. He never changes. Mm -hmm. His word never changes. Amen. So we need to repent. Why? Because when Israel repented, God blessed them. When they disobeyed, God judged them. Mm -hmm. That's why as we see the, the, the biblical prophetic fulfillment in the history of America, the hand of God in the history of America, the blessings of God in the history of America, as we see America turning away from God, we know what the consequences are. Yes, we do. We're in a critical moment right now in this nation because we're turning away from God and creating our own Ten Commandments, mm. our own... Uh, we have our own agenda. We're no longer on God's agenda. We are have an agenda that is opposing God's word, God's law, and God's you know his commandments. That is why, for us as individuals, this is not about politics in Washington. This is about individual because God is God of the individual. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus. Because it's not about. The, 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 the big mass of people. No, it's about one person at a time. Mm. Every person walking with God, turning to God, one person at a time, until the whole nation is consumed with a revival. Because America, as you know, was born out of a revival. 1773, 74, 75. Great revival, the reawakening. The Spirit of God was poured on America, united America. And out of the great reawakening came the, the union. Mm. Because now we are one people under God because of the great reawakening, the Spirit of God, the Word of God being preached, and the nation being born out of the revival. So now we need to go back to that foundation, to the Spirit of God, to lift up America again, to unite America again, because we are divided, and the only thing that can unite us is revival. Revival for survival of our union. Mm. That's what we need, because this is our history in the scripture, in Daniel, Gabriel talking about America, and America is in biblical prophecy, and the end of America is in biblical prophecy, as we will see, because there is... Clarity in terms of what God intended for America to do, just like he had clarity with Israel. He said, this is what I want. You do what I want, I bless you. Mm. You disobey me, I judge you. We've got about 10 minutes left. I want to read a scripture here, and I want you to explain this to us about Isaiah 18.3. 
It says this, All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lifteth up an ensign on the mountains and when he blows a trumpet, hear ye. I've heard you talk about this. That's why I wanted you to talk about that a little bit more about America and something they did. This is... This is just amazing, the precision, the clarity. No coincidences, uh, Dr. Moore. No coincidences. It's it just prophesied so by Isaiah. Isaiah saw America sending men to the moon. To the moon. This is about mm -hmm. landing on the moon. Yes. The whole world stood still. Putting the American flag Putting on the, the moon. Putting the American flag on the rock, mm -hmm. on the moon. Mm -hmm. Isaiah saw that 2,600 years ago. Mm -hmm. He prophesied that America would do that, and America did that because <laughs> it's not about men and men's wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's about what God, God ordained amen. 2,600 years ago that America, will, when they land on, that, on the moon, they will establish themselves as a sole superpower. Mm -hmm. That is why. America will never rise up to greatness without the Lord. Mm. God ordained mm. Mm. all the technology and all the things were released by God for the purpose of vindicating his name by blessing his people so that the nations of the world would know that when a nation follows God, they are blessed and they are lifted up and there is a breakthrough on every side because God's got a breakthrough. Amen, so amen. we are seeing breakthrough everywhere, but now we're about to see breakdown everywhere because oh. everything is, you know. Oh, okay, you, you, you have done a fantastic job of establishing America as a nation that is talked about in the Bible. I want you to come back now to these last days because America is also talked about the things that are going to happen and one of them happened, America happened in Israel back when President Trump was still the president. You, you, you know, our God is a God of divine suddenly precisions. History follows biblical prophecy. History is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Headlines of no, tomorrow have already been written mm -hmm. in the Bible about men going on to, to the moon and mm -hmm. landing there, America orchestrating all that as part of the destiny that God had given to America as the sole superpower. As long as they obey him, amen, as long amen. as they follow him, that's a condition. As long as they meet the condition, God will continue to bless them and continue to lift them up. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at, uh, first of all, let's look at Zechariah. Okay. Because Zechariah 8, 7 through 8. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Now, God speaking about the return of the Jews mm -hmm. to Jerusalem. We know Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70. Mm -hmm. In 135 A.D., Emperor Hadrian actually made an, an executive order, an edict. Mm -hmm. And he said... No Jew will ever be allowed to go back to Jerusalem. No, the Jews must never again build Jerusalem mm -hmm. as their capital. Mm -hmm. And of course, the third thing was the Jews are to never build a temple on Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 135 AD. That's a restrainer, the restraining order that was put by Emperor Hadrian. Now, hear me. God lifted America as a place of the protection of the Jewish people and the persecuted church in Europe through the Inquisition. And he says they'll go up to the moon and the world will watch as they go up to the moon. Mm -hmm. And he says the next thing they're going to do is they're going to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish peoples. 2017. Mm -hmm. They will recognize Jerusalem 
as the capital of the Jewish people because Jerusalem will be inhabited again and it will be a Jewish city after 2,000 years. Isn't it interesting that he didn't say Tel Aviv? No. Which is the old Joppa. The, the capital now. He didn't say Tel Aviv will be, but Zechariah heard from God and prophesied that it would be Jerusalem. Jerusalem will again be the capital of the Jewish people and America mm. as an instrument of God will be there to make it happen so that America is an instrument of God in the end of time mm -hmm. to fulfill biblical prophecy. Mm -hmm. It's in prophecy. It's in the it's, and it's, it's in the, it is written. <laughs> it is the, written. Amen. It is, in the, it is written. So we see that it is written, telling us about the future of America and the end of America and the blessings that America would be to the nations. And what amazing thing is said here. The Jews will go back, yes. even from America, to Israel. It says, I'll call my people mm -hmm. from the West. Yep. Meaning I'll call the Jewish people mm -hmm. from the West now to return to Israel, and America will be there for them. Mm -hmm. America, it could be, you know, one would say America is backslidden, which is true. America is going through a judgment, but nevertheless, there is a lot of people that fear God and love God and are praying in this nation for America to finish strong, to still fulfill mm -hmm. its calling, to, to be a blessing to the people of God, especially to the Jewish people. That is why I want us to, to, to look at um, hmm. what Peter. it says in First Peter. First Peter 2, 9. We're going to end with this. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. That is a message. For every believer. Mm, hallelujah. For some of you who are just so excited about America, the end of America, before I, spoke about, I speak about this passage, I want to just say to you, Revelation chapter 12. When the great tribulation breaks out in Israel, when Israel is surrounded by, by the nations to destroy them, battle Armageddon, America is mentioned. It says the remnant, the Jewish people out of Jerusalem will be carried out of Jerusalem to a place of refuge, a place where they'll be nourished, a prepared place. And it says by the great eagle, mm, the, the American wings eagle. of the eagle. The, the American eagle. So America will be engaged in the battle of Armageddon to rescue the Jewish people surrounded by all the nations that wants to exterminate the Jewish people. And there is a role for them to the very end, to the Battle of Armageddon, mm. and the rescue of the Jewish people. Because there is a remnant in this country that will not abandon Israel, that will stand with Israel, Amen. and pray for Israel, and bless Israel, because they know that we share the same God, the same destiny as the people of God. One new mean, Jew and Gentile, we are the elect of God among the nations being brought together to the commonwealth of Israel. Hallelujah. So we will stand with Israel. The nation may not stand with Israel, but the people of God will stand with Israel in this nation and they will be an airlift of the Jewish people mm -hmm. to the places of refuge mm -hmm. in these last days. Now listen, hear me. Listen to what he just said. The nation of America may not stand with Israel, but there will be a remnant of people in America that will stand with Israel. Just like when we read about Israel, backsliding, turning away from God, they, there was always a remnant, and there will always be a remnant, a people that know their God, a people that God's going to use. Daniel spoke about them. Those that know their God in the last days are going to do exploits. They're going to follow. 
the dictates of the Holy Spirit, not the political dictates Amen. of the New World Order. They're going to follow God. They are not going to turn against Israel because the nation is turning against Israel. They're going to go with God and go with the Holy One of Israel and go with the, with the children of Israel and rescue the people of God from America. The American eagle is going to do that. Amen. There is an end time role of America, but this is not the political America the America that you see, mm -hmm. but this is the remnant, Amen. the invisible remnant, the elect of God that fears God and follows God in these last days. God's going to unite them and they're going to be a force to reckon because the anointing will break every yoke of bondage. They will be fearless, they'll be bold, courageous, and they'll go forth and help the Jewish people especially the Messianic people in Israel, when they come under persecution, there will be people from this nation that will help airlift them to a place of refuge, to a place Hallelujah. of shelter. This is part of the American that is yet to be fulfilled, the American plan of God that is yet to be fulfilled. But this is a part of the remnant in America the elect of God in America. It's not about the political, economic mm. superpower out there. It's about the people of God Amen. who are going to be faithful to God to the very end. They're going to go with God, not go with the new world order, the agendas of this world. They're going to go with God's agenda. It is written will define them. Those are the people that we are looking for. Those are the people we want to hook up with. Those are the people I say right now, contact us. Say, hey, I want to talk more about this because we want to talk. We Time for dialogue has come. Mm. Time to really get ready, positioned to work together in this critical hour when Israel will soon come under tremendous, tremendous attack from all the nations. The replacement theology church will be against them. The, the Muslims will be against them. The United Nations Security Council will be against them. Our government will be against them. Every government will be against them. But God will be for them. And we will know God, walk with God, will stand with them to the very end. Because that's part of the calling of the people of God in this nation at this time. You've heard it here. America is in the Bible. You've heard Dr. Moore explain to us how America is in last day's biblical prophecy. He talked about, now's the time for dialogue. If you want to know more about us, if you have questions, if you want to join this remnant that is being raised up, here's a link that you can go to and you can put on your email address. You can notify us or put a comment on these YouTube or Facebook uh, Q&As that we do and we'll contact you back. We ask that you pray for us. Pray for Dr. Murray and Good News World. Pray for our radio station that's going out and taking the good news of Jesus to over 1.3 billion people around the world on shortwave radio. Pray for this man himself and his family. Pray for me and my family. We covet your prayers. If you want to give, if the Holy Spirit tells you to give to this ministry, there's two ways you can do that. Number one, you can go to this link and click on the donate button and put in your credit card information and give as the Holy Spirit would tell you to give. Second way is you can write a check, cashier's check, money order, business check, whatever, make those out to Good News World, and you'll see another link at the bottom of your screen that's a P.O. box that you can mail those into. Dr. Murray, thank you for well, showing us, and so it is much. written that America's in there and telling us about the way that America's going to be used in these last days. We've got some more good things coming for us over oh, the next few yes, weeks. Yes, Don't miss. Don't miss the Q&A. Because God leads us what to share, mm. when to share. We, we trust the Lord. We, we don't have the agenda. Mm -mm. He's got the agenda. So <laughs> we're not going to plan for God. Mm. God's got the plan. We want to follow his plan. Amen, so amen. that's why we, sometimes we can't tell you what we're going to do next because we're still waiting to hear. And so it's always fresh for you and for us and exciting because God still leads his people. Hallelujah. He still wants us to wait on him mm. and depend on him. I know you're ready for your blessing. You're ready to walk in your Abrahamic <laughs> anointing blessing. You, you are God. ready to, to, to experience God. Yes, you can experience God. Yes, God can speak to you. You need the blessings. Thank 
And we were going to put that blessing according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and Thank keep you. Father. May the Lord lift up his countenance lift it up. and shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace in the name of the Father yes. and of the Son yes. and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen.